Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with international chart-topping, award-winning music artist, Hitch. Hitch, welcome to The Music Reel. Hello, how are you? I, I'm very happy to finally meet you, dude. I've had yes, so much yes. for such a long time. You have been such a successful artist and so many major events and festivals around this country that you've, I, I don't think there's many that you haven't performed at over the last no. decade. So let's talk about, let's start with what lockdown was like for you. How did it impact what you were doing? Well, um, as soon as I was actually on a plane to Ingham and I was doing music workshops with Queensland Music Festival there and when we were at the hotel, that's when everything stopped. Like the flights, um, they all started to be cancelled. So it was a big shock because we were there doing, um, well, I was doing music production with the youth and um, with the elders to do their um, music clip. And Graham Collins, is it Graham Collins, a country singer? Um, he sings, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing, um, he flew over from Mackay and his song, um, a, little fur, a Little Further North, we're doing the remix with the youth. And this all happened while we were there. And it was such a big shock because I know we had a lot of um, shows lined up and we had a lot of, um, you know, great ideas because we would start a new cultural show, um, Queensland Music Festival. We're going to start to go back to because we just finished Arakoon. We're going to go back to Sherberg, Warabinda. And at the same time, I was working with um, an artist called um, Adrian Jukuru and an artist called um, Troy Brady or Jungaji. And we were going to do our – and everything stopped. So it was, to me personally as an artist, it was, um, yeah, it was heartbreaking. But for me as a spiritual person, I think it was almost like a healing that the earth needed. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like It was like we were so fast paced because it was just schedule here, fly here, go here. And it was almost like it was bittersweet because I know a lot of my artists you know, friends, you know, who rely on the touring, you know, obviously, you know, with the change of, you know, record sales, everything's streaming or gigging. So every, as you know, it's, it's all about the shows. You know, I've really felt for them. Myself, personally, look, I had some backup work, but yeah, it was very, it was really hard. But as I said, at the same time, I think it was a healing thing for all of us that we had to stop for a bit. You know? I'm so glad you said that because yeah. I've had about 200 conversations so far and believe me, the majority of people are saying exactly what you're saying. Oh, even, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, even though they've lost so much money, so yeah. much, they felt like it was so great to stop. No yep. running. And they got to catch up on things that they had not done for years. Yeah. And I know with our team, they absolutely loved it. They loved stopping and just reconnecting with themselves, with yep. their families. So I think there's a lot in what you're saying. So I want to explore that with you. Yeah, yeah. I know with your music and in your workshops, I see the word healing a lot. Yeah. Uh, and neuroscience. So I would really love it for everyone else out there that doesn't know what you do. So now yeah. you look, you've toured the world, but you specialise in taking your workshops around rural and regional Queensland. So yeah. this is developing musical artists, culture, mm -hmm. identity, yeah. creating a sense, sense of well-being in. in I guess, themselves and in the community. Can you tell me about how this all came about and what's the healing that you've actually witnessed happen in these musicians and their communities as a result? All right, cool. Well, before I begin, uh, I needed to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land which we're on, Brisbane, and acknowledge the old spirits. And as a cultural Samoan man, I always do it in my language. Yeah, faku lo waku ya o kounga nganga so and that's in my language and as a cultural high talking chief from my village this is where i split from the artist to the cultural human being that i am and acknowledge and about the healing so those who know and a lot of people in the industry know um as i was very blessed Obviously, traveling around the world, you know, started from the Beatbox Alliance with me and Joel Turner to um, writing the album and then getting nominated at um, APRAs and ARIAs and then moving off, getting picked up from Timmy Trumpet to Tenzin to Bombs Away, Rave Radio. A lot of other guys know me from the industry that Kitsch was always MC Kitsch, 
ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna break out of rap, put your hand from that to yet fakulo waku ya oko, kaku fai kaku mafukanga the nay, meaning I'm here to begin our meeting with a spiritual culture. So a lot of the boys and the, and girls, female artists, DJ Fan and all the other female artists that we have here know me as that type of person. So I've never split, I've never said I'm this, I'm that. That's me. I've always been the guy on the stage, but also the healing. So when I mean the healing, a lot of people um, know me that I've worked for different agencies. So sort of the same as like, you know, the nightclub agencies, but I was working for Creative Tracks, which was under Human, the organization. And I was picked up from uh, a beautiful... Torres Strait Islander elder named um, Annie Bridget Gray. She had faith in me. She said, you know, I think you've got the heart for this. So this started about 2012, 2012. And I just finished my um, tattoo ceremony in Samoa. We have a ceremony, which I'm very lucky that, you know, when the missionaries came, we accepted Jesus. He was a good man. But we wanted to keep our ceremonies, which a lot of Pacifica Islander People don't know, you know, and that's a tattooing, which is this one here, if you can see on my leg. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, yep. yeah so that's with the traditional tattooing. So at the same time, I was going through a transition myself as a cultural person going through ceremony. And then, um, yeah, Arnie Bridget Gray found me. Well, she didn't found me. Well, yeah, she found me through mutual friends. If I wanted to go up to a real community, which was a big stigma back then because... Back then, 2012, that's when um, Jonathan Thurston, who's the, you know, the football from the Cowboys, his uncle was murdered down in Logan, which you know, I'm from the south side of Brisbane. He was murdered from Pacific Island or Samoan boys. So there was a big like, war between the Samoans and the Aboriginals. So it was, this was almost like a healing in itself when Arnie Bridget saw, okay, this is a young Samoan artist. What can we do? Let's see if we can, you know. So she took me up to a, an Indigenous community, which is about three hours drive, um, Sherberg. It's my first community. And, yeah, it was, and we clicked as in, um, I th you know, you never say I'm going to, well, I never thought I'll be a, a workshop facilitator or a cultural facilitator. You know what I'm saying? I just knew I loved music. Yeah. But I never said I'm going to be a cultural facilitator. It would just... It was almost like my ancestors were guiding me to say, this is your other transition, you know, being, you know, a young um, Samoan going through ceremony. And, and I realized I was so blessed and so lucky that I got to tour, not tour, but, you know, for the past 10 years with Creative Tracks and now with Queensland Music Festival um, from Sherberg to Warrabinda, Cooktown, Hope Vale, Mount Isa, Palm Island, um, now we've got Aracoon, um, which is, you know, way up, way up north and just working with the elders, which I love, you know, working with the elders and, you know, everybody, but I love working with the elders because they're the last key of the knowledge, you know, once our old people gone, that's it, you know, so I'm mm -hmm. so lucky that I get to record, you know, so using that same format of making music, you know, with vocals and beats, but this time it's the vocal of storytelling or the vocal of, you know, if we don't pass that on to the next generation, it's gone, you know? Yeah. So just like the indigenous community, Samoan is about oral. So, you know, telling the story. So a lot of people, yeah, I've always known that I've always done, like I've got a prison workshop that I've been doing for the past seven years, which is called the tour program or warrior program, which is I use music, hip hop and, um, you know, we create songwriting, but then I interweave it with um, neuroscience, which is the healing of the mind. As you know, you know, the, um, the brain is such a powerful um, organ that controls our body and our mind and our spirit. And also in Samoa, we have the Anganga, the Malfofo, Malikingo. Those are like the three main, the mind, the body, and the soul, you know, the spirit. So using music as what I, you know, do in the club, everybody put your hands, you know, from that to transitioning to, you know, let's heal our past or heal, you know, the, you know, from drug addiction to, you know, domestic violence, you know, all that stuff. Everyone's got their demons, you know, no one's perfect. But, you know, we can all heal with the power of music. And that's where the healing comes in, where I found interweaving music and culture. And that's how I started this journey a couple of years ago. But still, you know, going up to the, you know, from future music, stereosonic, you name it, done all that, toured with my last 
group was Control Delete, which I toured for the last three years. Which we, my last tour was Hong Kong and New Zealand, and we finished that. But then after that, um, Chris, who's the, the the other half of Control Delete, uh, you know, I just said, look, I have to go full time with this, you know, cultural stuff because I was having children, and you know, I knew that you know the music stuff was always there. But I just said, look, I'm swapping from future music festival to like woodford because i can bring my kids on stage you know yeah, what i mean it works, I, better. it works better yeah yeah, yeah. you know so but that's oh, that's what it. i've been doing the healing the healing of interweaving culture using the neuroscience but also which the funny thing though when we did the, the two-year program of pathways to resilience the healing patterns of the bron- of the mind is the same as what our cultural stuff is you know that we've been doing for centuries which is music healing rhythm you know, which we all knew as musicians, you know, there's a, yes. there's a BPM that, that keeps that mind flowing, which they say 90 BPM, which is Beyonce's music, um, whatever, Beyonce's song was one of them. And I was like, man, we've been doing that for years. And us musicians know with the power of healing, you know, exactly. with music. When you're sad, play a sad song. When you're happy, you know. When, you know okay. so. Kitch, that sounds to me like the way of the future for our industry because we're looking for a blueprint. Yep for a roadmap to recovery, right? Music yep. is healing. I mean, you, what's it like when you're at a live gig? You've got, you're entrained by the music. You've got yep. that energy exchange happening. Yep. And that affects yep. every part of you. So yep. you know, could you imagine um, our lives without the soundtrack to it, you know? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Everything we do revolves around music. So I, yep. I, I think anyone who's watching this wants to know a little bit more about what you're doing because I think... We, we're going to have to change things as we move forward, obviously, mm. thanks to this year. Yeah. And maybe your way, this um, wonderful workshop, I guess, process that you've got, mm. do you think that that might be something that, I guess, ordinary everyday musicians could perhaps come along and participate and then it might help them to change their perspective about what's happened this year, find where the yeah. healing is in this whole yeah. decimation? What do you think? Yeah, I think that's like I think that's a great idea. I think because a lot of musicians have been stuck. You know, obviously it's been so hard. You know, and like I said, we're not in the industry. I don't know, thirty years ago, where you sell your record and you can sell a million records and you're fine. You know, our industry now is you have to gig. You know, you know, even streaming. What I'm not sure. I forgot the stats. Greg Dodge told me the stats. He loves stats and data, but you know, a million streams is like only five thousand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how many? Yeah, I think it's is like that right? Like, Zero zero four cents per stream. Yeah, and so you, you know, can't make any money. Off that's it. not sustainable. You know, no, you can't live. It's so it's like I was lucky enough that um, this path found me. You know, with the workshops. You know, and how. And you know, at the same time, it could be a blueprint for those who want to get into this industry because music is. You know, when you find out as a musician, when we write and create, we're giving. You know because we're giving of ourselves. We, we, we're tearing something from our past or, or predicting something, you know, whether it be a love song, a heartbreak or motivation or a set, you know, we're actually giving. So at the same time, we're already doing that anyway. We're giving us, but this time if we set up a format of workshops, you're actually in the live moment, as they would say, when you create a song, you're creating with the other artists to help heal themselves. You know, because in the end, we all are givers, you know, but hence why I think this break has been good because we've got to stop giving. We have to work on ourselves or mm-hmm. help heal ourselves, you know, before, you know, as you know, we have moments when you can't write a song, you know, song blockage, you know, that's the mm-hmm. sign of the universe telling you you've been giving too much out. You need to focus. Some people either, I'm a rainforest person. So when I'm feel stuck, you know, I'll go to walk in a rainforest. That's just me. So it's about all of us finding our our energy, getting our energy back mm. and focusing whether it be healing within ourselves to do this blueprint of workshops and like, you know, talk, you know, don't, don't pay a therapist, you know, 20 grand or something. We can all sit in a circle of healing, yeah. you know, and it's not indigenous because we are all indigenous, white, black, mm. brown, pink, blue. We are all indigenous. We all come from an indigenous area. You know, we do, and I think you've actually touched on something so important ceremony. You know, yeah, I'm a ninth yeah. generation skip, I've got no culture whatsoever. Yeah, and yeah. if we had, you know, a tiny one percent of, of indigenous, indigenous culture and we had ceremony, I think it would make a difference to mental health, depression, yeah. anxiety, all those yeah. things. 
Yeah. So it sounds to me like, um, yeah, your idea of, of yeah, your workshops, I think, has got a far bigger application thanks to 2020 because it's yeah. taken the tree and everyone's just said, oh, my God, I, for the first time in history, how is this possible? And it is an opportunity for us to go, okay, who am I if I'm not yeah. out there with you? What's my yeah. value to the world if I can't do what I used to do? Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. That sounds awesome. And so moving on from that, I guess, yep. what does 2021 look like for you, Kitch? Well, my last, my last record, which I recorded, was with um, Jungaji, which we were nominated, the Q Music, last year. So that was actually my last record, and that was a song in no English. It was just my language, Samoan, me singing in Samoan, and Jungaji singing in um, um, Google Yalanji, which is the, the country or the clan country up Cairns in, inland. So that was my last record. I think for 2021, um, me and um, Jungaji or Troy Brady, uh, we're going to start writing some more language stuff because I've got a lot of records that I've been hidden away with all language. So the last two years, since 2019, I've translated my English rapping to Samoan rapping to write in language. Yeah, 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 to create a more. So that was a healing for me because mm. I was getting bored of as, um, you know, from 2017, I was over, you know, having a drink and go, okay, let's go. You know, it wasn't healing anymore. It was a blessing that I did for 10 years and I was successful. But it wasn't there. That's why I stopped. And I realized the excitement of music was me pushing myself. And that was writing in my language and trying to, you know, because I could speak my language, but I couldn't write it. And I did, you know, and it's more, it's so much harder to write a rap in my language and then translate it. Anyone go, oh, that sounds cool. But if another Samoan heard it, they'll be like, well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I had to, I had to make sure it made sense. So from that, that's the plan is to write. I've got a, I've got a couple of records in the vault once um, me and Junker G get um, together again and um, we're going to start rehearsing and probably start doing more shows, yeah, towards, um, you know, the Woodford-style festivals. Yeah, you know, you that's it. where I can bring my kids on stage and they can sing language songs with me and stuff, you know. Because so, music's all about family, yeah. collective, like connecting, yeah. so, Yep, I love it. Well, look, Kitch, I have loved listening to you today. I can't wait <laughs> to see you back on the road, hear your new music, and I think I would love to go to one of those workshops. Oh. <laughs> so, Kitch, thank you for adding no, your thank you. conversation, sharing your story, and just giving us a bit of um, hope for the future. I think that's been valuable. Thank you. No worries. Thank you so much, and all the best, and um, blessings to you and your family. Thanks, Kitch.